Hello and welcome. This is going to be a quick run through of how to install Ubuntu, the new version 12.04 desktop in VMware Fusion 4 for the Macintosh. A couple of things you need to get started. First of all, you need to make sure you have the Fusion product installed. Uh, you can get that by going to VMware.com, visiting the Fusion page. Uh, you can see here that there's a free 30-day trial. You can try it for 30 days, see if you like it, uh, and if you do, you can arrange to buy it. The other thing you need is the is the uh, Ubuntu uh, ISO for version 12.04 desktop. You get that by going to ubuntu.com slash download. Uh, when you go to that page, you'll see a few different options. You'll see a download uh, uh, link for desktop, download link for server, some other options here on the page. What you want is the Ubuntu desktop. And when you get to that particular download page, I'd like you to take a look at the section over here on the right where it says choose your flavor. There are two options, a 32-bit, which is recommended, and a 64-bit. Uh, even if you have a 64-bit computer, 64-bit uh, version um, uh, of software, etc., uh, I'd recommend that you get the 32-bit version of the Ubuntu desktop. Uh, it's going to work better in the virtual machine for you uh, over the 64-bit. So go ahead and make sure that the 32-bit uh, option is selected. Uh, start the download, save that off to a place you can find it on the desktop maybe or, or in your personal documents folder. Uh, it's a large file, depending on the speed of your computer, it could take several minutes. Um, uh, if, if the site itself is actually slow, uh, it could take quite a, quite a long time to download. It's about a 700 megabyte file, uh, so keep that in mind when you download it. Uh, when you have both of those things, you're ready to go. Uh, fire up VMware. Uh, the Fusion product here. Uh, you'll see a screen something like this. Now I already have one virtual machine installed. Uh, if this is the first time you're running it, you'll see a kind of a welcome screen. Uh, the idea is to create a new virtual machine, so go up here to File, uh, click New, and that'll get the new uh, virtual machine wizard started. Uh, we're using an ISO file, not a CD, uh, so to start with, go ahead and continue without a disk. Uh, then you need to choose the disk or disk image. That's the file you downloaded from Ubuntu. So click on this, click it again to choose that, um, uh, choose the ISO file. Uh, I downloaded mine to the desktop. Uh, you can see it here. This is Ubuntu 12.04 desktop i386.iso. Uh, that's you want. That's the one you want. So click open. Uh, you should see that uh, uh, pop up here in the um, uh, in the option window. Uh, go ahead and click continue. Now at this point you may at some point in this process get a prompt to download VMware tools. If you get that prompt go ahead and accept it. Uh, it's not going to show up on this particular demo because I already have it installed in this system. But if you do get that option uh, you should go ahead and accept that download. Uh, check at this point to make sure that the operating system is properly selected. That should default uh, from the ISO file that you downloaded. Uh, if not check the drop down, make sure Linux is selected. Uh, for version, make sure Ubuntu is selected. Uh, then go ahead and hit continue. We're going to use the easy install method. This actually automates the whole process and for desktop it's usually a good choice. Uh, so make sure that use easy install is checked. Uh, I'm going to select a different display name. I'm going to select user1 uh, for display name and account name. I'm going to type in a password. I'm just going to select password and repeat that. You can take a look here. This checkbox allows you to see your um, home folder uh, from the virtual machine. There isn't really any reason to do that under most circumstances. I'm going to recommend you uncheck that box. Uh, if you do leave it checked, make sure that you leave this to read only. Uh, you don't want to risk um, uh, damaging any files. Uh, on your on your host system, the, your your Macintosh system, uh, using this virtual machine. So I like to uncheck that. Click continue and review the summary. Uh, the guest operating system is Ubuntu. Uh, it usually selects one gigabyte of memory by default. That's probably a good choice for a desktop. Uh, the maximum disk size is 20 gigabytes. It's not, it starts out small uh, and then only builds up to that as you add files. This would be the maximum. So if you know in advance that you're going to be storing, say, a lot of video files or you need more than that, uh, you can go to Customize Settings and override some of these options. 
I'm going to recommend that you stick with the default option uh, for networking of network address translation. Uh, that's a very safe, secure bet. Uh, the other option is bridged uh, if you get uh, the, op the system working uh, with network address translation. You can always change to bridged later, but this is a better bet for installation. And of course, confirm that the CD um, uh, image that you have selected is the one that you actually want to install. So when you're done with that, go ahead and click Finish. You're going to need to give it a name. I'm going to select Ubuntu 1204D for desktop. Uh, you can pick another name if you like. That's going to create a folder in your default virtual machines folder. Uh, you could save it someplace else if you wanted to, uh, but this is a pretty good default. Uh, go ahead and click Save. And now it's going to start the installation. Uh, and what it does is it, it, it automatically starts a boot up process. Uh, it loads a bunch of stuff here, uh, starts booting VMware, um, loads the ISO file that you downloaded for installation. And from here on in, the, the um, installation is entirely automatic uh, and there's no other um, uh, action from you that's necessary. Uh, on most systems, it's going to run about a half an hour to install this. Uh, you can watch it if you like. There will be several informational display screens that go by during the installation process that talk about features uh, of, the, uh, of the new system, uh, the new desktop, uh, some of the uh, Ubuntu features. Uh, so if you're interested in that, you can go ahead and watch the installation as it goes by. Otherwise, go have yourself a cup of coffee. I'm going to go ahead and pause the screen here. Uh, and um, uh, let it go, and we'll come back uh, as soon as it's uh, finished in, uh, installing, and I'll give you a brief tour of the desktop. And we're back. That took about a half an hour. Uh, just be aware of the fact that there are a couple of places where it might seem to hang. Um, uh, one section, for example, where you see a black screen for several seconds. Uh, give it some time. Uh, it will eventually come to the screen, uh, and this lets you know that the installation is complete. Uh, so now to get into the system, go ahead and click your mouse inside this uh, box here. Enter the password that you assigned uh, when you created the machine. Now be careful as you type that in. Sometimes the virtual machine um, uh, has an effect on your mouse and keyboard, so the, the repeat rate or the sensitivity might be a little bit different. You can adjust that once the, uh, once the application loads. It does take a few seconds to boot this desktop. Um, you'll see the quick launch bar appear. When the quick launch bar appears, it'll be fully booted. This is the quick launch bar on the left. It comes pre-configured with uh, a few, a handful of icons. Uh, we'll go through a couple of these uh, and give you a short introduction to the um, Unity desktop. Uh, to begin with, this is your dashboard home. Uh, if you click on this, uh, you'll see a list of recent apps, uh, apps that you've used recently. Uh, if you go down here to the bottom and click on the second icon, you'll actually see the recently used apps all of the applications that came installed with the system, uh, and then applications available for download. Um, uh, if you want to install software, uh, you're best off using the um, uh, Software uh, Management Center. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, in the meantime, take a look here. Click on this More Results um, link here, and you'll see the additional programs that are installed uh, on the system that came with the system. And you'll see there's a number of games, uh, office applications, uh, different kinds of configuration, and so on. Uh, one that I like to uh, move out to the Quick Launch toolbar uh, is up here. It's the terminal. Uh, terminal gets you to the command line. Uh, there are still cases in Linux where you need to use the command line prompt, so I like to have quick access to that. Uh, to move an application over to the Quick Launch toolbar, just click and drag it over to the toolbar, uh, and it'll plop it in. Uh, and if you can see down here, give it a second, uh, it now appears on the Quick Launch toolbar. Uh, so those are your applications. Uh, this icon represents your, your home desktop where you would store files, um, uh, pictures, videos, etc. Uh, the link to the uh, Firefox web browser, uh, be sure to load that up and check it to make sure that your internet connectivity is working properly. Uh, it comes with a suite of Office applications, a writer, a calc, and a PowerPoint style uh, application. Uh, if you want to keep those on the toolbar, you can, otherwise right click. Uh, you can unlock these from the launcher. 
And by doing this, you're not deleting them from the system. You're merely removing the icon uh, from the Quick Launch toolbar. Uh, and so we'll get rid of a few of those. Now this is the software center here. If you click on this icon, the software center will load. It has some recommended apps, uh, top rated apps. You can also click on the categories over here. You can search an app for uh, by name or, or by utility. Uh, if you see an application that you like, uh, you can click on it. Uh, it'll give you some discussion, uh, show you some ratings, and then if you like the application, you can click the install button. And uh, these are usually pretty automatic. Uh, all you need to do is click the install button, uh, and then they'll install for you. You'll notice that if you move your mouse up to the top, a hidden context toolbar will appear, uh, so you can close down uh, different applications or get at other, other aspects of the system. This icon here leads you to Ubuntu One. This is Ubuntu's cloud services where you can uh, store files and documents in the cloud. Uh, there's also a music service available similar to iTunes. Uh, this icon will lead you to system settings. Uh, this is where you can change the way your system operates. You can change the appearance, including the wallpaper or the uh, picture size. Um, you know, all of the things you would usually do with a similar uh, uh, similar uh, programs on the on the Macintosh or the Windows control panel. Uh, here you can adjust your keyboard type rate uh, and the mouse is off here to the right. Um, uh, so you can adjust your keyboard type rate or your mouse sensitivity if those aren't working for you. Uh, this is the update manager. You can see that there are already 15 updates even though we just installed this application. Uh, and you would click on that to install the updates. Uh, so that's a quick run of the desktop. Now you do have the choice of viewing this full screen. Uh, you can either click on the icon up here to expand uh, the virtual machine so that it fills your entire screen. Uh, you can also click on view uh, on the VMware Fusion menu and select full screen. Uh, when you do that it takes a few seconds to synchronize uh, but it does show the system in full screen. Uh, in order to get back if you move your mouse up at the top here uh, and give it a second. The VMware Fusion menu will return. You can go back to view and you can go back to single window. Uh, and that'll reset it. It takes a few seconds to uh, synchronize. Uh, to shut the system down you have uh, a couple of different methods you can use. Uh, you can use the um, uh, Ubuntu shutdown which will actually shut down the virtual machine. Uh, that's this icon over here. Uh, and you could go to shut down and then shut down the machine uh, and that will close it out. Uh, the other thing you can do is go up to the uh, VMware Fusion menu uh, and there's an icon up here that will suspend the guest operating system. Uh, if you click that it will suspend the operating system. Uh, it'll go into hibernation uh, and that suspends the system just exactly as you left it so that when you start it up again you return to the point where you left off. Once the system is suspended, you can close this particular window down. And then to restart it, uh, you simply need to uh, uh, launch, the, uh, uh, launch the virtual machine by clicking the start icon here. Uh, so that's a brief tour of the desktop just to get you started. Uh, enjoy the system and have fun playing.